Hey guys, every so often I have to remind myself of why I started doing this channel and uh, that was pretty much because when I first started doing the fountain pen thing as a hobby as opposed to just being a user uh, and I only had like one main pen for like 20 years um, I had to um, do some research and I had it went through a little frustration so I wanted to create a channel uh, that would bring you information uh, for people who were like I used to be starting with pretty much no knowledge whatsoever and having to build it now um, I had a friend of mine I used to work with and as it turns out um, he uh, ended up uh, introducing me to having a fountain pen and when I went and bought my own it was a cartridge uh, fountain pen when I couldn't find cartridges anymore I just stopped uh, using it and uh, when I found out uh, I could find like this a Waterman Phileas for 40 bucks uh, at like Michael's craft store I bought that and I used this for like 20 years and then eventually I said you know I'm kind of interested to see what else is out there so I went ahead and I found this on eBay uh, Jinhao 450 and I ordered one and used it and you know it, it didn't write for very long I got kind of frustrated because I didn't really know much about pens and how to service them and how to keep them clean and, and how to uh, just deal with them so um, I decided let me see what else is out there so I asked friends uh, on Facebook, I said, hey, anybody out there as a fountain pen user, do you have any recommendations? Because I'm looking for something new. Two recommendations came out of uh, one guy that I know who was a regular fountain pen user. He said, <clears throat> look for a Pilot Metropolitan, the ubiquitous Pilot Metropolitan, and he recommended a Lamy 2000. And he really liked the Lamy. And uh, so, okay, here I was looking. Now, these were for 12 to 15 bucks. No problem. I ordered one and I went, eh, okay, it's all right. And so I started searching out to see what the Lamy would be like. I'd never heard the word Lamy or Lamy or Lamy as it should be. So I went on uh, eBay and looked around and I, I actually started to shop and I found these were like $169, $170 brand new. I found somebody who was selling off their collection on eBay and uh, I purchased this one and I think I paid like $90 for it, which was not a bad deal and it's still not a bad deal. So um, that was one of my first major fountain pen purchases, the Lamy 2000. So, how about for people who are um, just starting out? They kind of, they heard about Lamy 2000, they want something that's going to be Lamy quality maybe, and they just don't have the budget for it. So where do you go with it? Well, this takes me back to the purpose behind my channel. I recently purchased a pen, and it was about $12, I think $11.90 delivered to my door, and there was a brand out there called Keiko, K-A-C-O. And this is a new pen that was launched by Keiko here recently called the Edge. It came in a package like this. And uh, I'll put up a picture of what it looked like before I took it out of the package. And fortunately, they included an ink converter with it. Um, and it came with two cartridges as well. So this is the Keiko Edge. Does it look like a Lamy? Yeah, kind of. Now, here's what I will say. When this pen was for sale, the listing uh, and the description of the pen literally compared this to this. Basically saying, yeah, you want a Lamy without paying the Lamy price, here's one for you to consider because look at the price of the Lamy. Okay, it was worth $11, $12 shipped to my door to see um, if that was really going to hold up. So. I've got these two pens and let's take a closer look. Okay, so here side by side I have both the Keiko and the Lamy 2000. So here the Lamy 2000, here the Keiko Edge. You can see that they're both about the same length, fairly close to the same length. And uh, matter of fact I've got statistics that I'm going to put up for you in just a little bit that will give you a full comparison side by side between the two pens. Length, width, uh, filling system, weight, all that happy stuff. I'll put that up for you here in just a little bit. But um, since it was compared in the, in the description and the Keiko really looks an awful lot like the Lamy 2000, I figured it's a fair comparison to put them side by side and let you know what you're getting into. 
So, for those of you who are interested, let's take a closer look. All right, you can see right here, the Lamy has got that square clip. Now, the Lamy 2000 has been around since like the 1950s. This was just released in the market. So, uh, it's not like this is a brand new design. Yes, the design is new in far, insofar as the clip. And you can see a few differences. For instance, up here on the cap, on the Lamy, you've got that ridge there. There's nothing of the sort here. Both caps um, do fit a little bit uh, bigger than the barrel. You look on the finial here, they're almost identical. And you look at the bottom here, on the uh, the bottom finial on the barrel, and you'd see you've got that circle here, and here you've got another circle on the Lamy uh, with that little silver insert there. Okay, so they both got the same general shape. They both got the same general shape cap, and they both have a metal clip. Now this particular clip, I've got to be honest with you, this is almost useless to me. This clip is nothing more than a roll stop, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I try to get a piece of paper in there. I mean, you can you can go ahead and really pinch it. Now, I guess the good side to it is if you're going to pinch and pull, um, then at least you've got a little more metal to grasp hold, but it's really tight. And earlier, I I mean, just trying to slide a piece of paper under there, you're going to tear the paper if you want to do that. All right. So, how do they stack up for size? Well, they're fairly close in girth. The Lamy probably has the 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 more girth to it. And I'll show that uh, coming up in those stats as well. So length about similar, girth about similar, cap length about both similar. So let's go ahead and uncap them and show you the difference here. Alright, so the Lamy has got that nice silky um, aluminum, I guess, uh, for the, the section. And you can see it's got almost a I could call it a semi-hooded nib. Whereas over here, you've got a very similar conical style shape, but it is a little bit different, and you've got the standard uh, traditional style nib. And this happens to be an extra fine nib, and my Lamy 2000 is a medium nib. Personally, I'm not a big fan of fine and extra fine nibs, but, you know, I figured I'd give it a shot um, for the price, and I'd see how good quality it was or not, as the case may or may not be. You can see that both of these have like a clutch ring here. Now that particular uh, ring um, on the Lamy is a little more pronounced when you go to put the barrel in uh, together because you've got a little tiny gap where that little ring has to fit perfectly. This one not so much. Um, when you screw it apart it doesn't really matter, but the only reason that little tiny nib is there and there is essentially to hold the cap on. So let's go ahead and cap. Nice easy push. The cap here, a little harder, a little further, and not quite as a pronounced snap, but you do have a snap. Okay? The Lamy. You've got a piston filler. So right here is the, a piston knob where you can turn. I'm not going to do it because it's got ink in it, uh, but you would fill it by use of the piston. And they do a really good job of concealing that line in the Lamy here where you can't really tell where that, uh, that blind cap begins for the piston. Here, there's no, it is not a piston filler. It's actually a cartridge converter. And let's go ahead and pull it apart. Now, I'm glad they included a converter. So, um, that is one major difference, and at this price point, quite honestly, I did not expect a piston filler anyway. So, what else can we tell you as far as uh, comparisons betwixt the two? Mm, yeah, I guess side by side, that's about it, okay? So, I'm going to do a writing sample here in just a little bit, and I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like, uh, what I thought was a good design, what I didn't like so much about the design here. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and I'll put up the statistics for both side by side. So I'll leave that stat page up just a little longer than I normally do so that you can get uh, an honest comparison. And it is fair to compare the two, especially since one was obviously designed off the other. But when I do my writing sample, eh, not really a 
fair comparison only because this is a medium nib and it is a Lamy style nib uh, and this is a traditional style nib in an extra fine. All right, be right back. Okay, here we are for the writing portion to show you the difference between the Keiko Edge and the Lamy 2000. Alrighty, so um, when it hit, let me start with the Lamy only because that's the the pen I've had the longest, and it's the what is this is being compared to. Now, one of the things I didn't mention earlier, um, they are both Macrolon. They claim, at least Keiko, that this is a Macrolon body. Okay, so it does feel similar. There's a little bit of difference um, of tactile sensation, but Keiko claims that this is also Macrolon, or at least the person selling it said it was Macrolon, just like the construction of the Lamy 2000. So this is my Lamy. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now, this is a smooth rider. I expect it to be for the, the price point at which these sell and for um, the namesake for which you expect an awful lot. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of a Lamy 2000. Its reputation precedes it. Essentially, uh, it's a good workhorse pen. They're getting to be ubiquitous. They've been around since the 1950s in this design. They're easy to hold and um, they're very comfortable to use and to write with. Sometimes they get a sweet spot. Uh, sometimes um, they just come perfect right out of the box. Like I said, mine was used when I bought it because, quite honestly, uh, when you're brand new into the fountain pen hobby and you look at a pen that's $169 as your next step pen, it's kind of a sticker shock, okay? Which is why Keiko, uh, the Keiko uh, company decided to come out with the Keiko Edge. 169 MSRP, about 12 bucks. It's kind of slightly hard pull, but you know they they both post they post well, and um, you know it. There's not much difference in holding this compared to the Lamy. You can tell it's a slightly different tactile sensation. You can tell it's a little different here at the grip. You can tell it's a little different balance. Believe it or not, this pen is actually heavier than the Lamy. The Lamy is a piston filler and here you've got a lot more weight in the cap probably because of this metal clip, this all metal clip. It actually makes the pen heavier and actually back weights it a little more but not unwieldy so. It's not like this is really puts it out of balance but you can feel the difference between the two. Okay, So let's go ahead and try the Keiko. The Keiko edge. This is an extra fine nib. I personally not a fan of fine and extra fine nibs, but this extra fine actually has been fairly reliable. I have used this pen uh, all day, every day for several days. I've carried it around um, in my little pen sleeve in this thing in my pocket for a couple of days now and I pulled it out used it and it is written first time every time it's you know it's a little scratchy for me which is why I don't like fine and extra fine nibs however for an extra fine nib and for a twelve dollar pen this actually is one of the better writing extra fine nibs that I have personally used or own so you know, I don't have a complaint with the performance of this pen at all. You're not going to get much line variation at all out of this steel nib. Now, this particular nib, it says right on it, Germany and XF. 
and I'll put up a uh, little graphic because I'll try to get a, a close-up picture of this particular nib for you. But, um, you know, a more traditional style nib than the Lamy, definitely, so that is a major difference there. Supposedly, if they're both macro-long, then you got the same material of body construction. Definitely a little different here. Um, now, here is what I have heard from other owners of these. I have read two different people who have said that their pen cap had split where a nice crack right up the side and pretty much negates the use of the pen where you it will no longer come in and snap tight uh, because the inner seal is no longer in place and held tight because of a split right here uh, along the cap now I haven't had this long enough to be able to have that kind of uh, pounding or abuse or um, or cracks in this particular pen. I've been using it for several days, not several months or several years. Uh, but I will say that so far it has been reliable. It has written the first time every time. Definitely a finer line. What I found actually this works okay in is I was sitting here doing my checkbook here just a little bit ago and I ran out with my wife. We did several purchases on my debit card and uh, was writing in the checkbook with that and quite honestly it would serve really well as an accounting style nib uh, just because it makes a nice fine line and a clean line it doesn't skip and it's fairly smooth it's not quite as good as uh, somebody let me borrow one uh, or use one time a uh, waterman that had a nice beautiful accounting nib from like the 1910s or 20s 30s somewhere in there so it's not like that kind of nice fine smooth accounting nib but this actually does fairly well for an extra fine nib I mean it's it's Chinese made um, even though the interesting thing is it says Germany on the nib and uh, you know that was interesting and when I got the converter the converter said on the back of the package Germany so like it was made in Germany so the converter itself made in Germany the nib says Germany now does that mean it was um, actually made in Germany or is it like the IPG uh, you know iridium point Germany on it because it doesn't say on the nib made in Germany I don't know I do know though that I got this shipped from China fairly short order um, many of you may be familiar with the seller on eBay Bobby uh, who uh, sells an awful lot of pens and uh, writing supplies well um, Bobby is the seller from whom I got this and uh, you know it didn't take too terribly long to get here it was nicely packaged when it showed up and for 12 bucks okay fine do I think it's a a, a, subst a good substitute for the Lamy 2000 I mean it's okay if you are just starting out in the hobby and you don't have a lot of money to spend or you're you're really leery of spending a lot of money and you kind of want something that looks like uh, and styled like a Lamy yeah go ahead and get it um, if you're looking for Lamy quality you know the Lamy 2000 definitely is higher quality than this it writes better than this it's a little more rugged than this but then again look at the price difference betwixt the two so if you're more concerned about budget okay fine the Keiko Edge uh, you'll have to I'd have to give the Keiko Edge an edge uh, in that but you know which would I prefer to use and carry on a daily basis it would definitely be the Lamy 2000 um, and you do pay for the name and the quality of a Lamy by comparison there's a reason this has been around since the 1950s it, it's just uh, a bulletproof hard work you know it's a workhorse pen you know it's been around for a long long time and it's a proven uh, it's a proven seller and it's a proven performer which is why they probably designed this pen and quite honestly for people on a budget who want a near Lamy you know a faux Lamy a pseudo Lamy if you will all right so anyway those are my impressions of and use of the Keiko Edge extra fine nib and not quite a clone of the Lamy 2000. Enjoy.